Hello, today I'd like to meditate with you on the readings from uh, Thursday of the 30th week in Ordinary Time. The first reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20, and the gospel is taken from Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, draw your strength from the Lord and from his mighty power. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities, with powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Therefore, put on the armor of God that you may be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to hold your ground. So stand fast with your loins girded in truth, clothed with righteousness as a blessed breastplate and your feet shod in readiness for the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, hold faith as a shield to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the spirit. To that end, be watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the holy ones and also for me, that speech may be given me to open my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, so that I may have the courage to speak as I must. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel, which is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Go away, leave this area, because Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go and tell that fox. Behold, I cast out demons and I perform healings today and tomorrow, and on the third day I accomplish my purpose. Yet I must continue on my way today, tomorrow, and the following day, for it is impossible that a prophet should die outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how many times I yearn to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were unwilling. Behold, your house will be abandoned, but I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, when Jesus began his public ministry, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and then he began by proclaiming the kingdom of God. He performed all kinds of healing miracles and exorcisms. There are at least seven detailed accounts of exorcisms, and Jesus also performed many more in the scriptures. His exorcisms, his healing miracles, are all to be seen in the context of the proclamation of the kingdom of God, and therefore the retreat of the kingdom of the evil one. In today's gospel, Jesus is told that Herod wants to kill him, and he says, you go and tell that fox. Behold, I cast out demons and I perform healings today and tomorrow and on the third day do I accomplish my purpose. Yes, Jesus performed the, these healings and he cast out many demons, but the reference today, tomorrow, and on the third day I accomplish my purpose is a clear reference to Holy Thursday when he institutes the Eucharist, Good Friday where he suffers in the flesh, and then Holy Saturday where he lays in the tomb, and finally when he rises from the dead on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, thereby accomplishing his purpose of redeeming us and restoring all of us to life through the power of his resurrection. Jesus also says, yet I must continue on my way today, tomorrow, and the following day, for it is impossible that a prophet should die outside of Jerusalem. He knows his fate. St. Luke at one point in his gospel earlier had said, Jesus turned his face resolutely toward Jerusalem. He knew what it was that he had to do it. He knew that he was going to have to undergo his passion, yet he did not shy from it. He knew exactly what he was doing and who he was and who he was called to be, and he willingly suffered out of love for us. In Jerusalem, there is a church called the Dominus Flevit Church. The Lord wept. Jesus wept for Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How many times I yearn to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were unwilling. It's not that God was unwilling to show mercy to Jerusalem, but they were unwilling to repent and to turn to him and embrace the one sent by the Father. They had killed the prophets. God sent more prophets. They resisted. And so their house would be abandoned indeed in the year 70. The, the city would be burned. The temple would be destroyed. 
And so Jesus offered them mercy, and he wept when they rejected the Father's offer of mercy. But why? How could it be that the pagan cities treated Jesus better, the Samaritan cities treated Jesus better than the holy city? Perhaps it was the working of the evil one who worked in the heart of Judas, for example, and the evil spirit entered him. People forget that leaders can come under diabolical influence. St. Paul, in the first reading from Ephesians, also speaks of this. He invites us to put on the armor of God. Uh, when I first arrived at the parish a year ago, a parishioner gave me this little uh, shield, uh, shows Roman armor, but it makes mention of all the images that Paul, St. Paul uses uh, that have to do with military attire. But he says, put on the armor of God. Really, put on God. As Paul earlier had spoken about uh, taking off the old man and putting on the new man, Jesus Christ. Put on the armor of God so that you can stand firm against the tactics of the devil. It is clear whom our, who our enemy is. It is the evil one. And he is not just some psychological sense or a mysterious presence. There is a real personal evil here. And St. Paul is very explicit. Our, for our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities, powers, the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Some people think, and if we just elect new political leaders, our problems will go away. Some people think, ah, my problem is really this person who is in front of me. But our struggle is really with the principalities, powers, the powers of darkness, and the evil spirits. Make no mistake. The evil one tempts people, he leads them into sin. He little by little gains greater and greater influence, not only over individuals, but even over uh, swaths of society and institutions. St. Paul exhorts the Ephesians, therefore put on the armor of God in order to resist on the evil day, having done everything to hold your ground. St. Ignatius of Loyola, being a military man himself, would have said, we don't just hold the ground, we just don't hold the line, but we even advance the kingdom of God. We are soldiers of Christ. And so, strengthened by the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of confirmation, we try to resist. We remember the words of St. Peter. The devil is prowling like a roaring lion waiting to devour you. Resist him, solid in your faith. Paul then goes on to talk about this military imagery. Gird your loins in truth. Right? To have a girded loin would allow someone to walk faster, not just to flee evil, but also to be girded in the truth. The truth is a person. To have the Lord fastened around our waist, close to us. It's dynamic, and that is the truth that sets us free from the slavery of sin. Stand fast with your loins girded in truth, clothed with righteousness as a breastplate. Righteousness, justice, being in right relationship with God and our neighbor. This is how every Christian should be uh, clothed. If we are unjust toward others, we leave ourselves open to a, a direct attack on the heart, a vital organ from the evil one. Clothed with righteousness as a breastplate and your feet shod in readiness for the gospel. Slaves were not permitted to wear sandals. Jesus' disciples wore sandals. Jesus no longer called them slaves, but his friends. To have one's feet shod means not just to flee evil, but also to be able to go forth, bringing the good news of salvation to others. Readiness for the gospel of peace. How happy are the feet of those who bring good news, Saint, uh, Isaiah the prophet says. In all circumstances, hold faith as a shield. There is, of course, the content of our faith, the so-called fides quae, the content that we would find in the catechism, the truths of our faith. We cannot allow ourselves to be deceived. After all, the devil was a deceiver and a liar from the beginning. But also faith, Pope Benedict says, is taking our stand with Jesus so as to live with him. That is an act of faith. Hold faith as a shield to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil ones because the evil one is on attack. Ignatius of Loyola and the spiritual exercises and the rules for spiritual discernment in the first uh, week of the rules for discernment in his uh, 14th point, he, he makes the, he, he makes, uh, he uses the image of the devil as a general looking for the weak place in the line to strike, shoring up his own defenses, looking where to make the attack and 
typically he attacks where he's been successful before. Therefore, the Christian ought to kind of look at his or her own virtues and vices and try to strengthen the virtues and eliminate the vices to get rid of the weak place in the line because the devil will attack with his flaming arrows and sh the shield of faith defends us. And we need to put on the helmet of salvation, again, protecting the mind and the intellect from the deceit of the evil one. And the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit, a sword is a type of a weapon that can both be used for defense, but also for attacking. And so we need to not always simply be defensive, but even to attack with the power of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is living and effective. It pierces the heart like a two-edged sword. So when people sometimes have dark thoughts, um, uh, impure thoughts, wicked thoughts, it's always good to meditate upon scripture and to fill our minds with the things of God. Sometimes even repeating scripture over and over till that becomes the mantra for all, all our life. Perhaps, but perhaps our most powerful weapon in the battle is prayer. With all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the spirit. We need to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit drives out the evil one. In the baptism even, uh, we also, uh, there were in the previous ritual especially, there were not only exorcism to drive out the evil spirit, but then there was the breathing on the child uh, to infuse the Holy Spirit. In baptism, we became temples of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit was poured into our hearts. But we need to pray in the Spirit. We see the power of prayer in the Spirit in pa Pentecost with the apostles gathered with Mary. Or the whole church prayed in the spirit and the whole building shook and the apostles were free, freed from their chains. All this is power, possible with God and in the power of the spirit. Let us make no mistake, we are engaged in a great spiritual battle. So let us take up the armor of God and make known his gospel, the gospel of his kingdom.